Right, good evening, guys. Good evening, guys. Down at Tortoise Capital, nightly strategy podcast for May 13th, 2024. Start with the 30 minute hybrid frog. Uh, first, I want to say on the Patreon site, there's a link to take a short uh, survey from a PhD candidate friend of mine from University of Pennsylvania who's studying the way we look at our own life stories through a narrative lens. How do we describe the stories? The kind of characters do we see ourselves as? What's the nature or style of that? And um, I'm going to uh, ask her to put together a little program of study for us specifically for traders. And so if you're interested in that kind of deep psychological work at all, I would encourage you to take that uh, original survey with her. It took me about 10 minutes to do it. I found it very enjoy enjoyable. And I think it's something that we could probably turn into an interesting uh, exercise for us uh, by looking at how we view our trading journey as part of our larger life journey through that narrative lens. And it's a pretty powerful tool for self-awareness and creativity. So if you're interested, send me a note and uh, click that link on the homepage to take the, to take the initial survey uh, with her. All right, um, let's get started with the 30-minute hybrid course, or work, uh, portfolio, I should say. And we start, as always, with Alcoa. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Alcoa. This is 30-minute charts. Just want to draw your attention to this thick red line. This is the five-day anchored VWAP. That acts like a really important magnet uh, and dividing line between forward bias and downward bias. So today's move, which I'll close here Friday and then gapped up to here and then took straight off, that would be seen as the re-entry into the positive bias So we were able to get long quickly follow it all the way up to where the R10 rolled over. And that causes us to raise our stop from the PSR to the edge of the dragon, just in time to make that exit and lock in one, two, three, four, five R on our standard risk. Um, that five day anchored VWAP has some magical properties, I have to say. Uh, I like the fact that the three, which is the green line, the three-day anchored VWAP was above that all the way. And then here's the one-day anchored VWAP. So all of this is range expansion and significant buying pressure, which makes that a low-risk entry. And then this, this positive close makes that a very strong candidate for follow-through trading tomorrow. So put Alcoa on your short-term list. The other reason it's interesting is that the S&P is in a very positive state. And then metals and mining, as you saw on the weekend report, was double plus good as a sector. And then Alcoa is a leading candidate in the sector. That's another reason why this is a low risk move and you get really strong follow through and tomorrow could be another big day, Alcoa. Uh, AI, same kind of thing. It crosses the five-day anchored VWAP, runs north, emerging dragon, standard entry, standard risk, runs all the way up. And when it comes back, uh, I used a money management stop here that I was willing only to give back uh, that much, essentially a one-bar low, and then X here, which was north, of the VWAP, that was such a strong move that began to collapse. I considered the short here, I didn't take it. It wouldn't have paid off. Uh, the idea was on the short, I was looking that it might return to the five day and three day anchored VWAP, and it got most of that way. So I'm thinking about these anchored VWAPs as reasonable targets after strong excursions away 
then that becomes like the reversion to the main trade. The actual main is the Bollinger Band main, but the price of the accountable price is down here in the in the anchored VWAP. So that's how the anchored VWAPs are shaping my view of reasonable moves in the market. I do like the reversal here at the end of the day and consider that another strong candidate for continuation tomorrow. Caterpillar, gap and go, fractional return. Cliff, gap and go, depth of out an R, standard exit at the dragon. I missed the second leg up. Uh, span of control issue. CBS, this was a uh, gap reversal. This thing ran smoking all the way up here and then like dragon horns. And then when it reversed through the VWAP, I get short here with the standard risk. I'm looking for a reversion to the main. I get most of that. And then when it reverses, I take it at the skin of the dragon for one R. Uh, DIA, same trade, it rolls over one, two, three short below the VWAP, standard risk box. It collapses, and then I take the exit at the skin of the dragon for 3R. Uh, Disney, no trade, Devon Energy, collapsing dragon, standard short, standard exit, 1R. Emerging markets, uh, gap up, big gap up and go. It rolled over and I escaped with this crash. Uh, ETHE, um, tried the gap and go long and lost half an hour. Uh, the short trade was available to the currency traders as the recovery trade was there, but it was too late in the day. I didn't want to get uh, stuck with it. EWW, gap up and sale through the VWAP, standard short, standard risk, standard exit, the skin of the dragon. After it came back to the three-day anchored VWAP and held support, I just take the exit at the skin, one unit of risk, two units of reward, take that one all day. And now, I like the longer-term uh, strength here, like this, the fact that it held here above the three-day, the five-day, the 30-day, and the 10-day anchored VWAPs, that's all positive. That's a good base to start tomorrow's move. That would be seen as a cut of two. And then if it gets above uh, 69, off it goes. So that's one to watch tomorrow for you EWW traders. Brazil, uh, gapped up, rolled over, short when it came through the VWAP, targeted the Bollinger Band main, and that's where it ended up. And that's about another 3R reversion to the main trading. Home Depot, collapsing dragon, standard risk to the top of the dragon in Bollinger Band. Sells off hard. I have to exit near the end of the day at the skin of the dragon. That's 3R. Notice how it collapses when it gets through the five day anchored and it finds support at the 10 day anchored. Those things seem to have some utility. Honeywell, I've started the trade on these. This was a gap and go. Uh, picked up an R. It ran up fast, came back to the VWAP, exited after a couple hours uh, with an R. The afternoon slide, uh, I saw it but didn't trade it. Intel, um, this was a gap and go. Uh, I'm not a believer, and I missed this whole move because I have different belief. Should be able to pick it up here uh, when it reverts through all of the VWAPs and ran all the way up. As it came back down, though, and was approaching the daily VWAP, I got short. And my target was this area down here. I was looking for the Bollinger Band main three day and five day VWAP. So I'm kind of targeting this price level. It sells off steadily. And it gets down to the 10-day anchored VWAP and the piece star flip. And then I don't want to hold that short overnight. So I just exit near the close for one unit of risk, one unit of reward. I really like that trade. That looks like standard intraday trade framing on a reversion to the mean. The mean.
IP, this was a series of two long side ventures. This one uh, gapped to here, started taking off, went through the PSAR, so it get standard loan. It ran up, sailed back to the uh, to the RL10 and the five day anchored. So I just take that and capture a fraction. And then I get a one, two, three reentry as it crosses the Bollinger Bend main. So I get long here again with standard risk. Powerful move right into the close. I don't want overnight risk. So I collect about two R net between those two trades. International paper, beauty. How far above the anchored five day VWAP can it get, you wonder? Well, you got that far. So that means tomorrow, um, you know, $40 is in range on a continuation pattern. High priority trade. IYR, gap up reversal through VWAP, standard short on a one, two, three entry, exit after the R10 peak and started to reverse and up for an R. Coke, gap up and go half an R. Regional banks, gap up and roll one again. Third V up by short of standard risk at the top of the day. Um, and down and solved, so we took a third of an hour. Uh, McDonald's big time rollover. This one, and again, they all look the same leaving the station here before it rolls over, crosses through the V map, enters the dragon. I get short with standard risk to the top of the RL 10, and this thing just collapses. And I exit near the close for 3R. Yeah, same trade for an R. Merck, same trade, collapsing Dragon for 2R. Microsoft, one, two, three, entry long at the skin of the Dragon, collect half an R when it rolled back to the skin of the Dragon, standard work. Marijuana, uh, one, two, three, long, standard stop, it ran up versus dragon horns, comes back to the skin of the dragon. That felt good enough to take. That's about uh, 0.7 of an R at the skin of the dragon. Nike, same trade for two R. NVIDIA, one, two, three, long, and collapse back to the skin. I probably gave back too much on that, but I wanted to give it room to run. Uh, so about a third of an R at the skin of the dragon. The energy. Uh, one, two, three short. It crosses the Bollinger Band main, emerges, gets all the way down to the Bollinger Band main. That was the skin of the dragon, I should say, in the Viva. It comes down to the Bollinger Band. That's the perfect reversion to the main trade. And notice, again, that's right where the anchored uh, five-day VWAP is. That's this thick red line right here. That's the anchored five-day VWAP. That's also where the Bollinger Band mean ends up. And there's the three-day anchor. So this whole cluster is the price target that this is reverting back to. That's where support can be found. So on that much risk, there's an opportunity to collect 2R in a routine manner. Palantir, no trade. Rivian, no trade. So UN, no trade. The S&P was basically sideways with a little bit of price decay. Treasuries gap up, but then sideways. So it's the market that's in a bit of a turn right now. Uh, I tried the rollover short on Tesla, and it came back with about an R. I don't want to hold that one overnight. Uh, Walmart was a big gap up and run up, and then collapsed back through the VWAP, a good fill, and picked up 2R on a return exactly to the VWAPs. Once again, here's the five-day and the three-day. Those act like magnets. When this can't go any higher and begins to falter, the least surprising move is reversion to this mean, and that's it overshot a little bit, but came back. Uh, sweet action. And that's on one unit of risk. Two units of reward, two to one. U.S. Steel, same trade, one R. Um, this is one where it departed 
the five day V web. So it, it teased above momentarily and came back through the three day and the five day and Bollinger Band mean. So that's the natural extension. And how far can it come? Well, it could come to here and it almost to penny. And then if you look over here, almost the same support level. That's the bottom of the channel. Now, tomorrow, if that drops below 38, look out below. If it goes above 38.30, look out above. How far could it go? It could go that far. So 38.90, there's a 60 cent possible gain on a move out of that range. So if you could risk 30 cents, you could pick up 60 cents tomorrow. So that's a critical state. It's ready to go in either direction. Leap ahead to finance. Same trade. It collapsed. Howell entry short on the PSR flip uh, to our near the end of the day. On its way back to the five day anchor V. Well, tomorrow, no be surprised if it comes down to here. And all of that originated with price action leading the five and run all the way up. Now here's the reversion to the main trade today. It's like breathing in and out. That's all it is. Uh, XLI industrials, here's where it departs the five day, rolls all the way over. Now here, this is a cut too short. Now see there's a high. Lower high, and now it breaks through the dragon. That's short. Exit at the skin of the dragon for two more. These trades frame themselves, fellas. Uh, XLK, this was a big gap up. Here was the close. Here was the gap up. It continues to go. It's above any resistance from yesterday. So speculate in with a standard risk. It runs up. There's the peak of the arrow, 10, it rolls over. I take the skin of the dragon for one R. I'm not trying to optimize those films. Just want to keep it in the money and collect gains on a lot of lottery tickets. That's all risk. Some of them pay off better than others. Um, This is uh, AI. This is sniper trade of the day. That means it's on three minute bars. This was yesterday's close, a nice tight noise box. Here's the gap up. Here's the OR3. Next bar, it breaks out above that, so I'm long from here. Record hold. That's the standard risk box in yellow. By this time, you're stopped. Now, what I like to do in the couple stages here, if my stop is here, uh, when it gets you know, around this level, uh, I'd like to just move my stop to here and leave that in place until the piece are can pick up and go. And then as long as the RL10 slope is positive, I'm content with the rising piece are. But if the R10 rolls over, when that peak occurs, then I'm going to come down here and look at the the skin of the dragon, which is a close stop. And wherever that is, I'm going to move my stop from here up to here in order to preserve that extra little piece. I'm willing to give back up much, but I want to preserve this case. So my first move, how fast can I get to no lose plus 10 or 2 until the piece arm picks it up? And then when the R10 is done, I accelerate to the skin of the dragon, lather, rinse, and repeat. Check or hold. If you're trading a lot of symbols, that 
will keep you from getting in trouble. Now, there's the peak of the RL10. So, while this bar is in play, the slope is still up, and my stop would be at the piece source. Why? Well, because my stop was initially here, and then when I had these two favorable bars, I want to lock in from here. Watch my stop is that box there. I want to lock in about there until such time as the piece are gets even with it, and then I can pick up the piece bar. Now, right here, that's how much I'm risking. Your mileage may vary. You may look at that and say, you know what? When this bar gets large and then starts diminishing and then I get a little doji, maybe I want to get to here anyway. I leave that up to you. I wait to see the peak of the RL10. So when this thing acts like a little doji, it does not make a new high. That's enough to make the R10 roll over. Now price is officially starting to decay now i can go from my stop here and i can raise that to the skin of the dragon and now when this bar closes and we're in this bar my stop is right there check it hold And I end up getting that exit. So on one unit of risk, we get about two R. Picture hold. Now what I'm watching is what is this RL10 going to do? Is it is the RL10 going to bounce off the dragon here and now give me a out of two entry? Or is that thing going to collapse and come all the way back to the Bollinger Band mate? I don't know, but that's what I was talking. I'm also prepared to enter, to re-enter long, not later than a breach above the RL10. And so what does it do? The RL10 holds at the skin of the dragon. I like that. So I can re-enter right here. So this exit was a little bit of insurance to protect against price coming back to the VWAP and from coming back to the Bollinger Band mean, we would have scratched the whole trade. So this exit here is a preemptive move, which gives back from the maximum favorable excursion. It gives back about that much, but it protects potentially against those two retraces. But when it doesn't fail and you get this, that makes the RL10 reverse and stay out of the dragon. Now that acts as a buffer. Now I can re-enter with the COD 2. Check or hold. There's the peak of the RL10, and I get out like clockwork at the skin of the dragon, and that gets about a half an hour. That's about 0.5. And that's enough in the morning. It's two and a half hour in the morning on EWW. Uh, here, oops, was it? Was that, no, that was AI, I guess. Wait, but, yeah, AI. Yeah, this is EWW here. EWW, the second sniper trade of the day. 
closing after a sideways consolidation. There was the VWAP close. It gaps up to here, sells off, moves up, closes here, opens here, takes off. I get a good fill. That's like the OR3 entry. I get a good fill right here. That's the standard size of the R10 risk box. So my stop, the path of my stop looks like this. This stop stays in place until the PSAR picks up. And now it's trading the PSAR because my stop until the R10 rolls over. When that happens, I drop down to the skin of the dragon, and now my stop goes from here to here. And it rolled over, and then it was two bars of solid pressure. So I exit here. And I cap, and on this much risk, I get this much reward. Check or hold. That's about 1.5 more. Now, we saw in the last one that the R10 held at the skin of the dragon. On the other one, uh, AI, it held at the skin of the dragon and then allowed a Kata 2 entry on the long side. This one, price collapses through the PSR and through the anchored VWAP, and you can see the R10 is just proving down. So it's short here with the standard risk. My target is the low of the day, which coincides with the Bollinger Band main, that would be target one. And then yesterday's VWAP, target two, then yesterday's close, target three. If I only get target one, that's worth about two R. Target two is an additional R. Target three is an additional R. So potentially two to four R available to the downside. Check or hold. By the same token, if this reverses here, I'm ready to get long if price reverses and gets above the dragon as a way to front run the emerging dragon entry, which would be up here. So this is simply zone of indecision. I don't know what it's going to do. But I have a trade frame in both directions. If I wanted to estimate how far this could go, how would I do that? Correct. You would take the low of the day and then stack a range stat on that to determine the upper limit of the maximum reasonable intraday move. And you would see that a re-entry here is a, still a very favorable move. Right, so we're short from here. Price collapses all the way down to target two. Almost in a straight line, uh, straight line sell off. Comes all the way down to target two, almost to target three. And this is where the R10 reverses. So now, instead of having my PSAR stop, I accelerate that down to the end of the dragon, and then that little burst of buying power picks me out right here. So on this much risk, I get that much reward, about 3R.
and that's enough for the morning. So that's between those two sniper trades on the three minutes, that's about five or five, maybe six. All right, let's take a look at the traders today. They did some really good work. Really good work from the boys. Uh, this is Alcoa. This is uh, Tim. He's put together a nice little package of our indicators on trading view for a reasonable price. He brings in 2.2 on Alcoa on uh, three-minute bars. Here's the gap up. He gets long. He cashes one, re-enters, catches a win, re-enters, catches a win. He gets 1.5.4 and 0.3 for net 2.2. There's the math that he keeps that up so that he gets his position sizing right, and that gets his that's a trade automated trade log for keeping track of the different patterns that he's working and his annotations on how he's reading the charts and he can see everything uh, on one chart for his uh, trading journal. Sniper layout by 3P4 traders is the name of their little group. And the sniper drawings and stats also by that same little group. Uh, here he takes Merck in the other direction, also on three minutes. Here's yesterday's close. Here's the gap opening down. It sells off harsh. It gets short and makes a win. It's short, micro loss, long micro loss, short, big win. Nets 1.9, standard stats. So he's got about 4.1 R for the day in the first couple hours of trading. Good day at work. Uh, Hamad, we had a great session yesterday with him and Kyun. He's working on a uh, every two weeks accountability check-in session. Now he just went through the uh, through two years of FAQs and ninety strategy podcasts and converted them all into uh, Cornell note sheets and uh, indexing all the big ideas. And he and I are going to write a book on that uh, and turn that into a focused practitioner's home study course. Uh, if the foundations course gives you the basics, that one is going to be the intermediate level journeyman's workshop. Uh, it's going to be uh, released, I think, in summer with another book and um uh most subscribers will get a huge huge discount on the initial sales of that so um, save your pennies get ready for that he's done a tremendous amount of work uh this is dia he's trading right now i've directed him to do just dia and eww uh so here's the OR3. He gets short, cuts it quick, re-enters short after it crosses below the VWAP again. Perfect short. No hesitation this time. Crushes it short. Exits where he's supposed to. Shorts, we shorts it scratch. Shorts it again, scratch. Shorts it again, passes for 0.7. I think he has some more in the afternoon. Yep. One. Yep. Ends up 0.7. And EWW, another 0.7, does it perfectly once more. Much more calm and serenity in that trading style. Well done. Uh, over to Brian on uh, and his currency pairs. And today he's working on the British pound, uh, Aussie dollar on the fives. Oh, sir, come on. He does get the second leg down for a micro loss, micro gain. Sir. Sir. Come on now. He 
it does crush it on the gold spot US dollar for 2.4. So he's made six and a half R on the first four trades of that one. And on the uh, the currency pairs, he's up 20 R on 30 trades. So that's about 0. 0.67, as you can see. Uh, that's That will feed the bulldog. All right, here's Jonathan. Let's see, where's my... All right, so uh, OR3 drives it long, puts it quick. Give it a he re enters. There's the feet. Takes the exit at the skin of the dragon for 0.37. SFC short as it crosses the VWAP Hulk mesh. It's a perfect exit. It continues to improve. Piece of our flip. I like that. I'd be short there or here. He stays out of the chop, tries this one for a quick micro loss, and another micro loss. So 0.67 for the day. Uh, Might have had some minor improvements available. Still good work. Uh, this is Kevin. On the uh, EWW thirty minutes, I guess. Good quick scratch. I like the reentry opportunity here. He got that on the three minute event, but um, what does that look like? Three minute. Okay, because it is three minutes. Yeah. All right. Now, perfect short when it crosses below the VWAP. Hulk smash, Hulk smash, couple quick scratches. There was a trade here that was available and then stayed too long on that. So he frittered away a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, his, he, I would agree that there's probably about an R improvement just due to timing. And I, I think it's a case you got to build up your cardio on this. Um, and, uh, yeah, just he's taken a trade out of urgency to trade, and there's no pattern, and that cost him. And this one might have been cut a little sooner, but uh, that point seven and that point three, I don't mind that trade to be honest. Uh, this one is the one we got to fix, and we could be short. If, so it's the trade not taken, and the trade taken. So both of those net out to about two R improvements if he takes the correct trade. So uh, work in progress. Uh, George, Hulk smash, way to go. Big gap up, reversal, smashes it short when it crosses the VWAP, crushing it and takes the exit here, 2.9. Yes, sir. We had this conversation in the coaching session. Well done. Uh, really good work from the boys. I can feel Buck on wood turning points being achieved here. All right, let's take a look at uh, reports. Hundred and fifty day frame. The recovery is in order. We are so close to that all time high at five twenty one, in an extremely tight little range today. I don't know. Do we see a breakout tomorrow or or retracement? I don't know. But we've got plenty of support levels, which also act as price targets on the way down for intraday tactical trading. And then if it breaks above this, who's going to be angry at that? Everybody's short. Like all the professionals are going to be short, I suppose. Whatever. Um, I like the three-day VWAP is positive. 
The five day is showing positive. The 10 day has crossed over the 30 and showing positive. The 30 day has bottomed out and is beginning to increment northward. All of that is good. We have the RL30 showing the owl. That's all good. And we're looking at the peak. All we got to do is squeeze through that. And we're good. But this was another kind of a doji day at the top of a really nice long run near previous resistance. Critical state. Don't revise your estimates because you want it to work. Honor your stops. Bullish normal, strength everywhere, except the last two days have stabilized a little bit. Volatility has made a nice run. It's just gone abnormally good. So that's the first caution that this is what leads to sell-offs. So we're right at a tipping point. It can get higher, but I'm not going to be surprised if it starts to retrace. That's what happens when you've been overbought this long. Perpetual vigilance. That's the price of freedom. Eternal vigilance. Let's see. Uh, in the Dow Tactical, strength in oh, Texas Instruments, and even some Cisco and Apple here. Cisco, Apple, Intel, it's all the value players on the tech side. So that's good. And the ETFs get strength in emerging markets. Everything else just kind of stabilized today. Uh, four to one and four to one in oil and Japan. No other patterns to speak of. That's a consolidation phase. Market is holding its breath. It's finally knocks on the door of the all time high and asks for permission to create. Hey, Dorothy knocking on the lizard of Oz. We'll see what they say. Auto framer, just a few. Uh, lots of squeezes today based on the uh, night range. A lot of good names in there, including the SP and the Qs. And XLK, Susan Martin is waiting for tech leadership to pop. Being dominated by the summer now. Uh, this was a mixed bag, to be honest, of winners, big winners and big losers. You see a lot of red, but also a lot of green. Coca-Cola looks really good. Cisco's making a short-term recovery after long-term underperformance. Emerging markets are just showing the way. Tech is in a good position to make a run. Trading value list, Tesla, marijuana, NVIDIA, clean energy, Intel, all the usual suspects. That's good. Um, this is my only concern. that We've had a nice run-up and reversal. This is a natural hesitation point. We've come back to the Bollinger Band main, back to normal after experiencing the sell-off and recovery. So this is the pause that reflects, that refreshes what's going to do. Which is it going to break up, break down, or just drone sideways? It's a coin flip. A three-headed coin. Three-sided coin, I suppose. Yeah, this is the absence of volatility as things calm down a little bit, that volatility rolling over. This is volatility based on ATR. This is on standard deviation of price. And we've come back to the long-term normal. So this is just... We're, we're right at the train station taking on more fuel and water and new passengers. Just don't know which way it's going to go. 
And finally, the uh, the Z scores have been a good guide. The depths of panic were avoided. It's right back into the middle. The overheated RL90 has come back to the edge of normal and starting to recover. That's like a buy on dip opportunity. And the recent 10 day move has been good. We've gone from below the river to just above the river, right at all time high. That's a perfect critical state. Anybody tells you knows what's going to happen, they'd be lying. So let's get ready to get this published and posted and ready for tomorrow. Keep up the great work, guys. And uh, again, be one of the early adopters of this new uh, advanced workshop that's coming out. You're going to really like the references, and um, it's, it's essentially going to be a giant tech manual uh, for specific uh, lessons. He's pulled together all the insights from all of the foundations, Q&A sessions, coaching sessions over about an 18-month period, tremendous amount of work, and starting to pay off in his trading, too. So that's why we feel good about recommending. Same kind of work that Phil and Griff did that have produced such an excellent piece of work in the COD2 challenge and the uh, adaptive systems design course. So this is going to be, the new course is going to be in that style, uh, building on the good work of others. All right. Take good care and we'll see you tomorrow.